Yeah, warm welcome to the audience to our first live satellite webinar. It's all about EOS, FNA, and FNB. I would like to thank Endoscopy on Air for the cooperation, the support, and providing such a platform for education and training, as well as thanks to the MediGlobe Group and the team realizing the today's event. It's a great honor. My name is Martin Kropf. I'm the Global Sales Director, and I'm working since more than 25 years within Endoscopy and Urologic. Next page, please. Before I'm going to start introducing our today's speaker, I would like to share a few information about the MediGlobe Group. MediGlobe was established in the early 90s and we are presented with our subsidiaries and distribution partners in more than 100 countries worldwide. If we're looking at our today's topic, ultrasound, FNA, FNB, MediGlobe is experienced since more than 30 years, as well as the portfolio. In the early 90s, MediGlobe have started to develop with Professor Wielmann the first US fine needles. Having a constant development an improvement we are happy today to share with you the latest technology and providing training, education, and live webinars. It's a great honor to be here today. Next page, please. Yeah, welcome of our today's speaker. And it's a great honor and pleasure for me to have Professor Peter Wielmann here. Peter, and forgive me to say, you are the father, I would say more the grandfather of US <laughs> guided fine needle biopsy. He was performing, Peter was performing the first US guided fine needle biopsy in 1991. He is well known around the globe and more than four decades active <laughs> in training, teaching, demonstration, hands-on, welcoming people and physician in his clinic for mentoring and training. It's amazing to see how focused, concentrated and patient Peter was and is from the first day getting EOS ultrasound to a stage where, we're, where we are today and to a standard. Peter, it's amazing and it's a great pleasure. What more to say than a warm welcome and Peter, thank you being here. It's your stage, Peter. Thanks a lot, uh, Martin, for your very kind words. Uh, and, it has, and it has, of course, been a, uh, a great endeavor for me to, uh, to be part of this uh, development. My, uh, and at the same time, very warm welcome to all colleagues who are listening to this and, and uh, to all who are friends of endoscopic ultrasound. My talk today will be my, uh, my love talk, so to speak, about US guided biopsy and the title Moving from Aspiration Cytology to Core Biopsy. So during my talk today, I will give you a very short uh, history. You already heard some of it, and, uh, and this is only going to be short. And then I will give you an overview on the diagnostic yields of EOS guided fine needle aspiration and and do we really need FNB and uh, which needle do you uh, have to to choose whenever uh, you use FNB and then I would like to show you uh, our results from our own randomized study where we have randomized the new uh, top gain needle from Mediglobe FNB uh, with uh, standard FNA needles and then of course there are some technical performance differences between FNA and FNB, and we will also discuss that. And I will also give a short look into the future of EUS guided biopsy. But before I do that, I would like you all to um, answer some questions. And uh, I will let you answer them now uh, and uh, please answer them uh, as you think uh, is the most likely and at the end of the this uh, symposium we will ask you again and see whether uh, the the the, the take-home messages is well understood so first of all please vote 
in comparison with FNA needles, what do you assume how much more amount of tissue can be extracted with an FNB needle per pass? Is it twice? Is it triple? Is it six? Or is there no difference? Please vote. The second question is, what do you think which of these two needle types produces significant more blood contamination if slow pull stylet extraction is used during the biopsy? Is it A, FNA needles? Is it FNB needles? Is there no difference? When looking at a specimen from the pancreas obtained at US guided biopsy, what is the difference in the mean diagnostic tissue area as well as, well as mean number of histocores between the top gain FNB needle and the standard pro control FNA needle? The standard FNA needle. Is it four times? Is it six times? Is there no difference? Is it two times? diagnostic tissue, and histocores. Please vote. For which indications would you use an FNB needle? Is it differentiation between two different neoplasms, submucosal lesions, lymphomas, new endocrine tumors, sarcoidosis, sarcomas, or if more cellular material is needed for molecular analysis, or if good material for immunohistochemical analysis is warranted, or is it all of the above? Please vote. So um, actually, it began in, in uh, for me with a linear endoscope in 1988, many, many years ago. But when Pentax came up with the first linear endoscope with a biopsy channel, we started developing uh, needles for this. And as you can see, Mediglobe was the one I was uh, collaborating with and the first needle assembling assembly was made. It is exact the same assembly as it is uh, today uh, created by all companies. My own thesis was a demonstration of the method and a proof that it is needed whenever uh, a lesion is seen uh, by EUS. Uh, and and um, let me go to the next. Actually, in the beginning, we didn't know what the indications were. We, we I mean, the discussion were, is it submucosal tumors or what is it? You know, to stick a needle through the GI tract was pretty, let's say, scary at that time. And people didn't really believe that that it could be done without uh, complications. The first publication that was really gave us a good insight in the in indication. I was part of that together with Moritz Vietzema, Mark Giovannini, Kenneth Chiang, and we realized that there were differences in the lesions that were, were biopsied. And, and we know now that Many, many studies. I have tried to gather meta-analysis with it, that the, the, the uh, sensitive range of EUS FNA in solid lesion is between 58% and 95%. Upper GI cancer staging, 69 to 87%. Lung cancer, 83 to 88 staging. Primary diagnosis. And as you can see, it's actually pretty good. I, I, I would say this is very, very high sensitivity that you have with FNA. But why then be interested in FNB? We have made a lot of studies, and I mean a lot of studies, to improve the method. With or without stylet, it doesn't matter. With or without suction, it doesn't matter. Uh, needle size, needle flexibility. So there's not much that matters. It doesn't change very much our sensitivity. What I would like you to make, let's say, uh, to uh, notice is that similar sensitivity, regardless of needle size, when we are talking about FNA, but bigger FNA needles take bigger bites. 
That's evident. Microcores are seen in standard FNA needles between 40 and 60%. So we also have microcores in FNA needles. And when you're looking at the literature, you should also look, uh, compare with this uh, knowledge in your uh, background. So there are different FNB needles. The, the first FNB needle was actually made by Cook the quick core, but it didn't work. Then the second came with pro core, and now we have these crown cut needle types. Not this one, but I will get back to this. We know from the first publications, big publications with more than 1,000 patients, core and standard needles are comparable in terms of diagnostic accuracy. The only difference that there was between this pro-call reverse bevel needles and an FNA needle was that the number of needle passes for diagnosis was significantly lower with the core needle. And we are talking about either three passes with an FNA or two passes with the, with the pro-call reverse bevel uh, needle. So uh, not that big a difference. But then this study came up. Uh, now there was a new needle with, with a uh, anterior facing bevel, the 20 gauge pro core, but notice a big needle and now compared to a very small needle. And surprise, surprise, there was uh, the 20 gauge, the big needle outperformed the 25 gauge in terms of histological yield. That is no surprise to me. Bigger needle, take bigger bites. Now the third generation F&B needles. There are these on the market, Charcot, Acquire, Top Gain, and Trident. And we know already a lot about, uh, at least we know now uh, about the Top Gain, the Acquire, and the Charcot, the Trident. I don't have any uh, publications on that yet. So um, if you notice now, this is uh, one of the early studies, but what you noticed here, this is the 20 gauge, a big needle pro core compared to a smaller 22 gauge acquire needle. The length of tissue cores per needle pass was significantly higher with the 20 gauge acquire needle double the amount. And even though the needle is a smaller needle, that was an eye opener at that time. Apparently there's no difference between the shark core and uh, the acquire. So it's, it's matter, and this has been also documented in, in, uh, in uh, randomized or in randomized and also in in, in, in big uh, uh, studies uh, like uh, meta-analysis. And there is really no difference. So the, the, the conclusion is Francine and fork tip needles, particularly 22 gauge, showed the highest performance for tissue sampling of pancreatic masses. And this was also compared to the 20 uh, gauge uh, needle. So significantly, in favor of a crown cut needle. We also know now that whenever you need uh, to do a biopsy of a submucosal tumor and a gist, you should choose a crown cut needle. Look at this. Uh, even though this is a retrospective multicenter study, the sensitivity between these two needle type types are significant in favor of the FNB uh, type of needle. Autoimmune pancreatitis. Now, again, the 20 gauge, a bigger needle compared to a smaller crown cut needle. Again, here we see that we are looking at, at um, we are looking at uh, level one and two uh, autoimmune pancreatitis. And again, showing that 78% diagnosed by front cutting needles, and only 45% with the uh, forward beveled needle. 
I would like to share with you now our own results with the top gain needle. This was published in uh, the UED week, and uh, I would like to, to um, demonstrate the results. It's a randomized comparison of tissue quality between a modified crown cut FNB needle and a standard FNA aspiration needle. And we, uh, it's a multi-center uh, study. We included 68 patients that were randomized to FNA or FNB. And what the results show was the mean number of histocores per pass was 4.4 in the FNB group compared to two in FNA group. So the doubled amount per pass in the FNB group. The mean diagnostic tissue area per pass was six times as much with the FNB needle compared to the FNA needle. And the diagnostic tissue, this is actually what you want uh, of a specimen. The mean total tissue area also six times as big the amount than compared to a standard FNA needle. Sample quality evaluated by our pathologist in a blinded fashion, also statistically in favor of FNB. Sample cellularity statistically uh, significant. Interestingly, the FNA needles seems to produce a larger number of samples with significant blood contamination, even though the same slow pull method was used. And blood in your specimen, you don't like. So now we have to concentrate on, do we need FNB? Is there any difference in sensitivity between an FNB crown cut needle and an FNA needle. And I think now we have big studies showing that there is a difference. In big studies, this is a result from a large multi-center randomized control trial that showing that there is a difference, even though FNA is up to the standard, 88%. The sensitivity of FNB was 94%, significantly bigger. So I think also this, we know now that FNB needles, front cutting needles at least, you, you don't need rows anymore. So this is a conclusion also in a big number of patients, and it shows there's no uh, there's no, um, there's non-theoriority, so there's no difference whether you have rows or whether you do not. I was a long time speculating on what should the, the, the um, indication be, and yes, uh, everybody can uh, nod on pancreatic solid lesion differentiation. Then the, the, also the indication that I uh, ask in the poll. But I'm getting more and more uh, uncertain about it because why shouldn't we not entirely go to F and B needles? Because if we have enough patients, sensitivity seems, at least as it is, to be higher. So I think that is at least something we should consider. You should be aware that there is a difference in the technique, and I call it the, the stabbing method, because it's more a blunt needle. So you really have to stab your way into the lesion. And, and th that can sometimes be pretty hard. With the FNA needle, it's going smoothly in because it's so sharp. With this, you have to stab your way into it, as can be seen here. There is also a difference in how to prepare uh, this cytology with FNA, that is a smearing uh, into, onto a slide. With FNB, it's histology. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, histology and tissue that is 
that is still uh, looking like tissue. And you can make an imprint before you put it in formalin, but finally it should be placed in formally and, and treated like true histology. Future directions for EUS guided by biopsy. I'm sure that we will see better and better EUS imaging, new trans transducer technology. This is an, a new un, uh, un plug uh, for a standard endoscope that will also affect our biopsies. Uh, artificial intelligence, for sure, we will also see that, that this will impact uh, our biopsies uh, as well. And, and uh, new needle designs. This is just one example, but I think it has not come to an end. We will still develop new and interesting needle designs. Molecular analysis of F and B samples, genomics, transcriptomics, proteomics. For sure, we are moving into this field, the new era of molecular uh, diagnosis. We already know that even in FNA needles, the overall K mutation testing applied to cases that are inconclusive by FNA reduces the false negative rate by more than 50%. We also know from this randomized study between US FNA and US FNB that the, uh, the FNB uh, provides better uh, adequate nucleic acid than does the FNA needle. Our own uh, clinical results so far, we are, uh, we are uh, growing organoids based on FNB needles. We started with FNA and were not very often successful. I think we clearly now have a clinical uh, experience that FNB needles are needed in order to uh, have your um, organite cultures uh, survive. And we are now doing drug screening uh, and, uh, in order to, to uh, start personalized uh, medicine. This is an ongoing study. Coming to my conclusions, moving from aspiration cytology to course biopsy. US guided FNA has undergone 30 years of evaluation, a wide range of established indications of US FNA exist, including staging as well as primary diagnosis of a variety of lesions. New crown cut core needles improve significantly histological tissue harvesting from solid lesions with improved tissue quality and cellularity and seems to improve diagnostic yield compared to FNA needles. We don't need rows anymore. And unexploited potential for obtaining material for molecular analysis and harvesting of cells for growing organoids exists and EUS guided biopsy may in the future become an important method in tailored oncological therapy. Thank you for your attention. And I think I think we will um, we will now uh, proceed with um, with uh, Simon. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to. I'm here to present uh, the first case of uh, or the case for today. Um, Today, Today we have a, a case uh, for you, it's a 70, uh, sorry, 65 year old male who presented it with constant abdominal pain for several months. Uh, in primary care, uh, uh, gastroscopy and colonoscopy was performed without any findings. findings. Uh, they also uh, tried to, to perform a transabdominal ultrasound, uh, but could not visualize the pancreas, uh, after which he was referred to the hospital and had a CT scan performed which showed a lot uh, four centimeter tumor uh, originating from, a, from the uncinate process uh, with, uh, with tumor infiltration to a superior mesenteric vein and relation to the superior mesenteric artery. It was deemed borderline resectable. Uh, so uh, 
he was referred to a, a ultrasound guided biopsy transabdominal, which did not yield any uh, uh, conclusive material, uh, likely due to some degree of patient overweight. After which he was referred to an EUS guided biopsy, which we have uh, uh, planning on performing here today uh, to, uh, to, to get some histology prior to uh, uh, downstaging chemotherapy. So with that, uh, let's uh, move over to uh, uh, Lena in the OR room. Um, she's, uh, I think she's ready for you now. Yes, we are ready. Can you hear me? Hello, welcome to this uh, endoscopy on air uh, live session. Uh, in the endoscopy room, I have with me my nurse assistant, uh, Meta. And um, Peter Wilman just joined, and we have anesthesiologist Frederick with us. Uh, the scope is already, we have been in the D2 and um, found out that the tumor is more visible from the stomach. So we are back in the stomach, and we can see the endoscopic view. Uh, I'm here in the pancreas just above the uh, confluence. And we see the tumor. Maybe I can show. Can you see my? We have the confluence here, and we see the attachment uh, of the vessel. And we have the fine flow here. We can see it is really connected to the SMV and the and the confluence. This is the SMV, and here you see a part of the tumor and the bigger. Uh, Part of the lesion below the room for a little after mm -hmm. Yeah, the catagon. From D2, we saw that the lesion was all the way behind the SMV and the portal vein, so uh, we, we cannot uh, attach it from there. So we will go forward with an FNB. We have the Mediclope top gain needle. Yeah. Whoop. Is that okay? Yes. And first, I want to adjust my sheet. So we have a proper length. Just have to get connection again. Tumor still visible here, a big tumor. Here's the sheet coming out. We can see it moving. Yeah, here you see the sheet. And then we fix it and loosen the needle. It's a little bit more mobile position than in the D2, but this is the only way. And I push with the stabbing movement. Did, did you notice that that Elena Brent was also uh, stabbing uh, the needle in? And from here, I try to do we do the slow pull, Meta is starting to pull slowly, not equal, equal, equal my hand. The needle tip, it's exactly seen here. I try to do the fanning movement to get as much, as many areas in the tumor uh, represented in the biopsy. So with the elevator, it's difficult to move. So I use the, okay, I the big general. wheel. Yeah. to try to get further on to the to the left the needle is still here inside the tumor if you don't see the needle tip inside the tumor you don't get tissue from the tumor so that's so it's important mandatory yeah. <laughs> 
once you're inside the tumor, it's sometimes quite difficult to move your needle. You have to go almost all the way out and then redirect and, and even down. step more. Okay, so the stylet is out. As you can see, we are using the slow pull uh, method. We, we have been doing that for the study as well. But basically, uh, I, I, I'm not sure whether it makes any difference also with an F and B needle, whether you do aspirate or whether you, whether you would do slow pull. Basically, um, it's a new needle type, uh, but we don't have the studies as uh, as yet. But uh, I, I doubt uh, it's probably the same as an F and A needle. So uh, we will uh, now. Uh, expel the material and um, Sorry. if I can get the needle out <laughs> yeah so we put this in formalin now first it's a common one. yeah first we will um, this can me yeah can see yeah yeah there is a small core there is a small core. Yeah, we reintroduced the stylet just to to get the last out. It's probably a little difficult to see. Yeah, so, and we can, I think we should repeat, uh, we should repeat, uh, it's, uh, the material is okay, but uh, I think for, for sure, uh, at least two biopsies uh, per lesion should be uh, performed. So we will do a second pass. Yeah, there are some questions. Um, with the evidence with F and B needles, in which situation do you use F and A needles other than excess in therapeutics and cysts and pancreas? Uh, a very good question. It's uh, exactly uh, the indications that we use F and A needles for. So we may sometimes sometimes if we are in a very very difficult position uh, with large it's vessels in front i could uh, sometimes tell myself yeah. this is yeah, too um, uh, dangerous uh, and i take a 25 gates fna needle uh, and then uh, do the biopsy uh, with this needle but otherwise, it's exactly what what the um, it, it closes down. Uh, it, it what, what the the, um, the question was. Uh, it is for access that we use uh, FNA needles now. Uh, for aspirations in cysts, that's uh, true. Another question in a mixed lesion, which has solid material that's and nice. cystic material, which needle would you use or advise to use? Actually, as it is right now, we, I mean, if there is solid lesions in connection with the cyst, I will take an F and B needle again. Good. I think we yeah. still need to have more studies with only cysts and F and B needles. Yes. We don't know uh, the results uh, as no, yet. No, but for sure, solid lesions, that is an F and B. We have another pass. You have another you. pass. So, no, no, farmer, yeah. Okay, I'm not there. Are they still not there? No. Then I have so hard.
So again, I think we have material, but uh, in my opinion, I think we should do another F and B uh, type. Yeah. Var den blevet sløv på nogen måde? Det var den ikke. Nej, jeg synes jeg. Den, den, ja. den er lidt bøjet måske, eller hvad? Ja, yeah, we'll yeah. take a new needle just to... Ja. Yeah. So, um, sometimes you have a feeling when you have done a biopsy, F&B biopsy uh, more than two times that the needle gets even more uh blunt and uh, in that case sometimes you need to take another one mm. we did do that uh, during our study so uh, it is a rare occasion but um, uh, sometimes uh, you may consider this as well so lena will do if we can get back to our to our us image lena would lena would do uh, an extra biopsy from this. Are you ready? Ready, Eddie? Yeah. So, yeah. The needle is coming out. Yeah. I want to see exactly where is the vessel because I have an idea that the tumor goes all the way down here. It it goes on the side. So the I might yeah. be able to even push a little bit further. Yeah. That's. That's going to pass both the nose. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. When when they're a little hole. Yeah. Oops, that was again. Yeah. And here, here come in. Okay. So again. Again, slow pull. Slow yeah. pull and the got weak. No, I didn't know. Can I bend it? Do I see the needle tip? Yeah, there it is. And a stab. Stab. Yeah. Kommer du egentlig over rigtigt? Ja, det gør jeg her. Så vil jeg komme ind, men, men den er bare øh, ja. den er svær at fane med. Det er jeg. Og så har jeg den okay. igen her. Så so, back sagt. and forth. How many times, Lene, would you think you are... That I stopped? Ja. Yeah. Ten or more. Ja, yeah. okay. Så... So, um, <coughs> While I'm expelling this, uh, maybe you should take an F and A needle and then um, try again. Yes. Uh, try again. So, skal Simon hjælpe dig? Oh yeah. Am I coming out? Yeah. That was a good core here. That was a good call. Yeah. And questions from the audience, David. Uh, what is the modification? Yeah, what is the modification of the top gain needle is one of the questions. And uh, the modification is, it is a Francine principle. Um, the uh, the spikes on the okay, top gain they... needle has a little different angle compared to the acquire needle. Um, the reason why we made that is because on bench testing we found that the penetration force was uh, lower I, I compared to, to the acquire needle. Uh, therefore, we 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 yeah ended up with this uh, kind of. Uh, Angle of the spikes. Can look at it again. <laughs> so and uh, there are maybe a lot of Q and A questions here. Um, 
which scope are you using? I see the needle coming out of the right side rather than the more common left side. Oh, that's a good also. Yeah, you know, we're using the uh, Pentax uh, linear uh, US uh, endoscope. And you're right, it's coming from the right, from the left side and not from the right side. And uh, actually, I think uh, in, in, in many parts of Europe, uh, this is the direction of the ultrasonic image. Uh, so um, I think, uh, yeah, enough of that. And uh, and again, could you open up this? Okay, Lene, FNA needle. So let's Same uh, gate, yeah, 22. Well, this is to come in a little higher. Yeah. So we try to aim a little different on the top of the tumor. But the bus moves in, uh, and we try to follow the needle all the way. The tumor is not very hard, but inside I feel some resistance. Can you see how Lene was actually slowly passing the needle in, in order to control exact where the tip of the needle is? That's how the perfect FNA uh, is performed. Because the needle is so. Med, med stille rolig. Yeah. Yeah. Du kommer bare og du tager. And again, try to do the the fanning to get even new areas. Now I can push to get a little bit deeper. I don't have to stab as much. Very close. Okay. We started T E, so we will be there now. Yeah. Mr. So while so here while Lena is um, performing the uh, FNA uh, biopsy, I would like endoscopy on air to uh, place the poles again, and I would like you audience to um, to uh, to answer the questions again, and I will see. Finally, when I come out uh, on the podium again, we will see how much uh, we, let's say, how much uh, the information that we had uh, settled in your mind. Ready. So please uh, vote again after uh, endoscopy on air has uh, has placed the polls uh, again. Yeah, go with. Ja, vi skal bare se, om der kommer noget mere. Det her. Var, var vi tilfreds med det, vi havde, Peter? Ja. Ja. Øh, det må du gerne, ja. Er jeg på? Ja. There is an, a, a question. If access is possible only through a vessel, is it possible to use F&B needle? We don't have any uh, results uh, as yet uh, with that. I personally would say, you know, pulmonologists, uh, there are uh, cases where they do transaortic biopsy. And as it is right now, I would rather uh, be in favor of an FNA needle uh, when you have to stick it uh, through a large uh, vessel. Um, then there is a question. When more than two punctures are needed, do you try another kind of suction method besides slow pull? No, I don't. I, I use slow pull or I, do, I, I don't do anything but uh, remove the, uh, the, the, the silage. I, I think it, it basically doesn't matter. Uh, aspiration itself with a syringe only creates more blood. And there is another question saying, I had a similar experience where I ended up doing six passes. Well above, above my max for F and B turned out to be Milena. Anyone noticed the same? Okay. Uh, uh, no, no, I, I didn't. I didn't uh, try that, uh, I must say. But uh, you're right, uh, blood also uh, and, and stools and blood turns out to be dark as, as tumors may be. Um, what is the best scope position to have successful stabs? 
And that's a very good question as well, because you probably noticed that Lena was struggling a little with the uh, transducer being pushed uh, away like this uh, while she was stepping. And of course, the more stable the transducer is, the less this happens. And, and therefore, I usually, when I prefer uh, to do punctures, I prefer to do that from the duodenum, if, if possible, because there you are more fixed. Uh, and that is, uh, that is uh, of course, an advantage. And then another question, what's your experience with door knocking method? Door knocking method. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that is, the door knocking method. I haven't seen that uh, in the literature uh, as it is. But I would like to conclude now that as it is, I would say it is difficult for me to say that there is a clear indication for FNA over FNB because FNB takes better samples. And maybe we should end up with the polls and see what you have uh, what you have uh, uh, done there. Okay, so uh, the polls are not quite ready yet, but uh, I think that that um, my I want to thank uh, my team uh, who is great in supporting these uh, events. Uh, I also uh, want to um, uh, thanks uh, thank uh, Mediglobe for sponsoring uh, the the event. Uh, so and I would also give my wishes to all my friends and colleagues and friends of the U.S. out there and uh, give them uh, good luck for uh, the biopsies. Um, the future looks right. It's, uh, I mean, it's not only diagnostics, uh, the strings of EUS is FN, the, the uh, method where you can see small lesions and where you can get uh, histology. Um, and even though uh, radiology methods become better and better, uh, I believe we will uh, even have this uh, preference because we're able to uh, to harvest uh, histological material uh, from these lesions. So getting to the poles, in comparison with FNA needles, what do you assume how much more amount of tissue can be attracted with an FNB needle per pass? <coughs> So the first results was twice the amount. The second was um, was ten, 10 voted for twice the amount. And the second, only seven voted. Uh, and actually, uh, the, uh, the, the right answer was that per pass, uh, the amount of tissue that can be extracted was twice the amount. Second question, what do you think which of these two needle types produce significant more blood contamination if slow pulse dilate extraction is used during the biopsy? Uh, FNA needles in poll one, 14 voted for FNA needles, 10 for FNB needles, eight, uh, no difference. In poll two, 11 voted for FNA needles, three for F and B needles, and no difference in one. The right question, the answer of the question is, of course, F and A needles produces significantly more blood than F and B needles. Number three question, when looking at a specimen from the pancreas obtained 
at a US guided biopsy. What is the difference in the mean diagnostic tissue area? This is what we need, the mean diagnostic tissue area, as well as mean number of histocores between the top gain FNB needle and the standard pro-control FNA needle. And in the first poll, nine voted in favor of four times, five, six times, uh, four, no difference, uh, nine, two times the amount. And in the second poll, four times the amount, the majority thought six times the amount, and that is the correct question. That is the correct answer to the question. So it's six times the amount. For which indications would you use an F&B needle? Again, first poll, um, yeah, all of the above, 33. And in the second poll, uh, only one voted for if good material for immunohistochemical analysis is warranted. So uh, basically, uh, maybe not as many voted in the second round than in the first. Uh, the right answer is uh, all of the above. So um, with these words, again, I would uh, like to uh, thank you all for for your attention and hope to see you out there in the future. Thank you for your attention.